Hello, welcome and thanks for choosing this video course. In this video, I'll be talking about facing sales objections. Selling doesn't come naturally to most of us, but that doesn't mean you can't do it effectively. Often the answer to understanding what is preventing your potential client from making a decision in your favor. Once you know why he or she is uncertain, you can reply directly to that specific objection. The common sales objections that people faced from their clients, such as giving excuses on your prices being too high, I need to discuss this with my spouse, is there a guarantee, or I want to think about it first. All the objections can be categorized into these four kinds of objections. How to know the above objection should fall under which category? You need to probe deeper into the true core of their objection. Lack of need. If the prospect looks right, fits within your targeting criteria, but they don't see the value in what you have to offer. Lack of urgency. You build the relationship, develop trust, the client knows you can help, and money is not an issue. However, the prospect can't move the project forward. They have a full plate and are waiting for the right time. Lack of trust. Trust comes down to whether or not the prospect believes you can do what you say you can do. Lack of money. You need to recognize if this is a genuine objection. An obstacle can be overcome, a genuine objection can't. When it comes to common mistakes, you are the type of person who quickly deals with sales objections, providing answers immediately, trying to overcome them as quickly as possible, and move towards the close, right? If so, you're probably not taking the time to fully understand the objection and what's behind it by asking clarifying questions. Dealing with the issue thoroughly enough and to the level of satisfaction the prospect desires. Presenting a compelling enough argument to overcome the objection and ultimately win the business. There will always be a point of time where you put so much effort into your presentation that all of a sudden your prospect raises an objection due to the fact that he or she isn't convinced of it. How did you go from hero to zero so quickly? What was so wrong with the way you handled that objection? This is where you should try and apply the APAC model. It's a simple little acronym which is worth remembering for the next time you're handling an objection. Step 1. Acknowledgement. You may initially think that this objection isn't anything worth writing home about, but the worst thing to do is to just dismiss it. Start off by recognizing that it is an issue and open the floor to discuss it. Second step, probing. Before jumping in, you need to spend some time making sure that you've got the full picture. Is there a particular reason that your prospect has raised this issue? Have they had a bad experience in the past, and is it actually relevant to what you're offering? Step 3. Answering. Now that you've probably gotten to grips with the situation, you can respond to it. Make sure to fully address any concerns the prospect might have, which you should know all about thanks to your intense probing session. Last step, closing. Finally, you need to confirm that the issue has been dealt with and close it. Remember, with the issue closed, you're also one step closer to closing the sale. When it comes to dealing with being objected for your price being too high, there are several mistakes people tend to respond with. First common mistake. Prospect, well, the price is too high. Salesperson, so how much can you afford? This is when most salespeople tend to jump into giving discounts. Second common mistake, prospect, the price is too high. Salesperson, let me explain to you again how much value you will get from this program. Most of the salespeople tend to jump into responding to prospect, explaining the values to the prospect again without really understanding what the real meaning of the prospect's objection is. Now, if you apply the use of the APAC model in handling sales objections more effectively, this is how things should go. Step 1. Acknowledge. I understand sometimes money can be a concern for some people. Step 2. Probe. If you don't mind, can you share with me why you feel the price is too high for you? You need to listen carefully to the prospect's response after you probe further to clarify the prospect's concern. For example, if the prospect's response is as below. Actually, I see the value of this program, but the price is beyond my budget. So, this objection can be categorized as lack of money objection. What if the prospect's response is as below? I don't think it's worth the investment. The objection seems towards lack of need or lack of trust instead of lack of money. 
Let's probe further to clarify the prospect's concern to find out the real meaning of the objection. Well, thanks for sharing your thought with me. Can you help me to understand which part of our service or program that you don't see has value? In your opinion, how much value can you get from our service or program? What are the things that you expected but didn't mention in the video presentation? If the response of the prospect is as below, I'm not sure if you're able to help me achieve the results that I want after I invested this amount of money with you. Then it's clear that the objection is due to lack of trust. But what if the prospect responded as below? The investment that I need to pay is higher than the value that I'm going to get. In this case, the objection is due to lack of need. Once you really understand the prospect's real concern, then you'll know how to respond and answer the objection by addressing the prospect's concern. What if the objection is due to lack of need? If the prospect looks fitting within your targeting criteria, but they don't see the value in what you have to offer, you are the one at fault. Either you're not resonating, not exploring all possible needs, or not addressing the right need. How should you respond to this type of objection? One, you may need to continue to explore the prospect's needs by asking more questions. Two, help the prospect to understand his or her own needs clearly and magnify their problems and pain. Three, educate yourself about the prospect's business, industry, and competitors. With this knowledge, you can take a good sense of where you can add value and how your services might help. By simply looking at what their competitors are doing, you gain valuable insights and ideas. Your prospect will take notes as I have never met a prospect that was not interested in market trends and competitive insights. Next, use the following closing techniques to close the deal after responding to the prospect's real concern. Here's closing technique number one, cost versus value. Switch their focus on how much this is going to cost to how much it's worth. For example, how much is it worth if you can? Closing technique number two, money is a resource. For example, you will spend this money anyway. Why not invest in yourself so that you can? You will be able to get it back. What is the one thing that you'll never be able to get back? And the answer to that is time. Closing technique number three, either way you're still going to pay. For example, you can pay me to learn from my mistakes or you can learn from your own mistakes. Either way, you're still going to pay. If the objection is due to a lack of urgency, when this happens, you have not demonstrated the impact of your solution well enough. Help the prospect see the value of how you can help by focusing on these two types of impacts. One, rational impact. The rational impact is all about determining the ROI and building the business case for moving forward. If you've done your needs discovery properly, you should be in a position to present numbers that clearly demonstrate the impact of your solution. The prospect must see a tangible dollar value. No ROI leads to any urgency. 2. Emotional Impact People buy with their hearts and justify with their heads. The emotional impact of a solution is just as important as the numbers. To uncover the emotional drivers, focus on those things the prospect wants to achieve. We call these aspirations. Aspirations go beyond the pain, those things the prospect must change, and focus on the things he would like to change and the potential rewards associated with getting this done. Paint this inspirational picture by focusing on these key questions. If you were able to work on this and get this done, what would happen to your goals? If you delay, what consequences might you face? Use the closing technique number four, if not now, when, to resolve the objection due to a lack of urgency. Take for instance, I know you're here to want to change your life and grow your business. What would be the benefits to you if you take action now? If not now, then when? Your competitor's business will continue to grow every day. Assuming the sales and setting conditions. So, which one of the packages did you want to do? If the objection is due to lack of trust, one, start with research. The more knowledge you have about the prospect's company and industry, the more confident the prospect will have in your services. Two, be genuine and show interest. This might sound basic, but all too many salespeople go through the motions and fail to recognize that at the most basic level, you are having an interaction with a fellow human. 
If that interaction fails to resonate with the prospect, all's lost because there's no relationship, no chemistry, and no trust. Relax, smile, have a positive attitude. Ask questions that show an interest in your prospect as a person, not just a business partner. People trust people they like. 3. Balance inquiry and advocacy. Find the balance between asking questions and talking about your offerings. One of the best ways to advocate is by telling stories. Sharing relevant stories and examples also shows how you've helped other businesses and is the best way to build credibility. Stories are an endearing and tangible way to demonstrate the intangible. Just make sure to articulate outcomes and results. When it comes to closing, assuming the sales and setting conditions, which one of the packages did you want to do? If the objection is due to lack of money, your prospect sees the value of the services that you're offering, they have trust in you, and believe that you're able to help them to achieve their results, but they have a budget issue. Money is a real concern for them. You have to make a decision if you want to work with this prospect. Example, I'm happy to know that you see the value of what we're offering and trusting our expertise. As this service requires a lot of my personal time, I would not be able to give any further discounts. May I suggest that you give yourself a period of time to focus on gaining some capital from your current business first? Do approach me when you have enough money to invest to scale up your business. Does this sound okay to you? To offer an alternative way to work together. If you think this potential prospect is your dream client, but their budget is just slightly below your fee, you can offer an alternative way, such as an installment plan or offer a lower range of services. When it comes to closing, you should state, well, thanks for exploring the working opportunity with us. I hope we're able to work together soon. When it comes to dealing with objections, such as, I need to talk to my spouse, this is how the dialogue potentially could play out. That makes a lot of sense. Do you think he or she will have some questions about what we've covered today? What type of questions do you think that your spouse will ask? He'll probably ask about the price. Well, that's an easy one to answer. Do you think he'll ask about the technical side or the mechanism issue? Prospect. I don't think so. Probably not. He or she is more concerned about price. You. What do you think he or she will say about the price? The prospect then says, it's too high. Then you say, I bet that's exactly what he or she will say. What do you say about the price? This is the test that determines if you're dealing with a smokescreen or an objection. If it's a smokescreen response, the prospect will say, uh, I think the price is a little high. You have just discovered that the spouse is probably not the issue. It's the prospect's perception of your value and price. What you need to do now is continue in addressing the objection. Refer to overcoming the objection of lack of need. If it is a genuine objection, the prospect would probably say, I think it's perfectly fine. Then you're dealing with a genuine objection. You've got two choices here. One, get the husband involved over the phone. Two, set up an appointment to come back and visit with them both together. You will have to make the best call here. I understand that whether you are on a big sales lead or a low service call opportunity, it can weigh heavily into the right decision. Let's take a look at how to set a new appointment with the spouse. You say, well, let's make sure your spouse gets the full picture because I reviewed a lot of information today and I understand that it's a lot to consider. I can come back this afternoon and review these options with the both of you at the same time. Will that be okay? Will you take a look at your calendar? Okay, six works for me. Would that work for both of you? When it comes to dealing with the objection from is there a guarantee, you can qualify the prospect and educate them. Take, for instance, for this dialogue. You say, John, whenever I ask someone for a guarantee, it usually means of these few things. One, I doubt about the capability of the service provider. Two, I doubt about myself. Three, I'd like to try it out, but in my subconscious mind, I foresee the outcome is not going to be positive. Be honest with me, which one of those things is in your mind right now? The prospect says nothing. Then you say, John, do you agree that in order for you to succeed in your business, you've got to burn all the bridges behind you so that you will do whatever it takes to make sure you achieve your goals? If there is a money-back guarantee promise, I can assure you that you won't be able to make it because in your subconscious mind, you have already installed a programming to tell yourself 
that it's okay if you cannot make it as you will get your money back. You know this isn't going to work. If you still want the money back guarantee promise, I'll advise you right now it's best to keep your money and don't start this program as it'll be a waste of time for both of us. So John, please tell me what do you think? Shall we proceed further to work together to get the desired results? Last but not least, let's take a look at the last objection on, I want to think about it. When directing the prospect, you say, John, whenever I tell someone I need to think about it, it usually means one of three things. One, I'm not going to do the deal for whatever reason and I just want to get off the phone. Two, I like the idea, but I'm going to have to find the money or talk to my partner or something else is holding me back. Three, I really like the idea and I just have to move something around before I say yes. Be honest with me, which one of those things is it for you right now? Qualifying the prospect. You say, perfectly fine, just to be sure, do you understand how this would work in your environment, right? Are you confident that if you moved forward with it, you would get positive results? If you decided to give this a try, is the budget there to move forward with it? Then just to clarify my thinking, what factors will you be considering in thinking about this? Getting the prospect's commitment. You say, no problem, John, when should I call you back on this? When can I expect a call from you on this? And what is going to happen between then and now that will convince you to move forward with this? Besides the common sales objections that you need to deal with, there are also other aspects that you need to avoid when handling objections. Don't knock the competition. That takes the focus off of you and your company and you never want to do that. Don't tell the customer that they're wrong. Don't tell the customer you don't understand. Don't argue with the customer. Don't lie to a customer. Long-term relationships are built on trust and honesty. It's far better to say, I don't know, but I'll find out and get right back to you. Don't be defensive. That is not a positive approach to an objection. Don't lose your cool with the customer. And finally, don't let an objection go by without an answer. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.